Hi guys, glad you could join me again. Whilst we look at the theropod that has gone through the most changes and caused the most controversies. Now I dare say that a lot of people on this platform probably weren't alive during 2001, let alone being old enough to remember going to the movies and seeing this guy take up your entire view for the very first time. But Grandad was there, Sonny. Before Jurassic Park 3, Spinosaurus aegypticus was known, but not exactly a household name. After this guy completely owned the T-Rex though, people were encapsulated by the spine lizard that was bigger than T-Rex. Not everything was as it seemed though. Believe it or not, it wasn't actually the movie's fault for once. Unlike the many other dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park series, the Spinosaurus that we see was actually incredibly accurate for its time. You see, Spinosaurus has long been one of those mystery dinosaurs that we don't actually know much about. Its discovery by Ernst Stromer in 1912 was made in Egypt when he described a lower jaw, some ribs, teeth and vertebrae with huge dorsal processes, giving the animal its namesake. Now given that the other closest known relatives at the time were other theropods like Tyrannosaurus rex or Megalosaurus bucklandi, it was assumed that Spinosaurus just looked like T-Rex with a big spine fin. And that's the way it stayed for a while, since the fossils were kept in Munich's Natural History Museum which was then bombed during World War II. And that was it. The nature of this beast was left to the imagination until other relatives were found. Theropods similar to Spinosaurus were found over the years, showing that this dinosaur was no T-Rex ripoff. From these various dinosaurs such as Baryonyx or Suchomimus, the Spinosaurids were born since Spinosaurus was technically the first of this group to be named. So there we have it. Case closed, right? Spinosaurus just looked like one of these guys with a massive dorsal fin on its back. No! Well, he actually had some more surprises in store for us. Come 2005, after Jurassic Park had made such an effort for once, a more complete skull was found showing that Spinosaurus actually sported a rather fetching head crest. And then the namesake itself started to be called into question. Was the sail on its back a half circle shape similar to Dimetrodon, or was the shape different? Was it even a sail? Maybe it supported some fatty hump similar to a bison? Well, these questions remained unanswered again for another decade, until in 2014, Nizai Ibrahim led another study. In this study, a more complete specimen of Spinosaurus was found, helping Ibrahim et al. conclude that it was indeed a sail, but with a more rectangular shape, more akin to an M than anything else. This study shook people up for other reasons though. Yep, for the first time, Spinosaurus's hind legs were found, and it turns out they were tiny! So much so that it was actually suggested Spinosaurus was a quadruped, walking on its knuckles like a gorilla to keep those claws sharp. This would have meant that those legs were less cumbersome for swimming, something that was being suggested for this dinosaur for years prior. Of course this didn't come without the non-believers. Many paleontologists argued that the hips seemed far too small and could have been mixed up with a juvenile specimen but studies on this dinosaur continued, along with many other close relatives. Come 2018, the general consensus was that the legs were actually indeed short for a theropod, but large enough that the centre of mass could be held over the hips close enough so that the animal could actually be bipedal. Now this appears to be the happy medium, since the legs aren't cumbersome enough to get in the way of swimming, but also at the same time, the animal wouldn't have had to rely on awkward quadrupedal movement, relying on hands that couldn't even pronate the correct way. Yes, all the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park had broken wrists. 
And then Ibrahim et al. showed that they weren't just one-hit wonders. In 2020, another specimen was found, this time with a tail. Much like the sail, the vertebrae on the tail of Spinosaurus showed elongated dorsal processes and underside chevrons. In other words, it was less like this and more like this. Now this has only strengthened the semi-aquatic hypothesis, given that this shape makes for an excellent paddle. But again, many naysayers decided to body shame poor Spinosaurus once again. David Hone and Thomas Holtz published a study in 2021 concluding that Spinosaurus would have produced too much drag and had a body too stiff for efficient swimming. They also argued that despite appearances, that tail was not strong enough to propel such an animal forward. And that's where we're currently at. We're still arguing and we're still wondering. Hydromechanics mean that Spinosaurus was likely an inefficient swimmer, but then what's the deal with the denser bones, those short legs and that tail? Even after a century, this guy's still a mystery. What we can do now is speculate. Still. Now I do have my own theories on this, but I'll get into that soon enough. For now, let's take a look at Spinosaurus's environment. Spinosaurus was found in the Baharia Formation of Western Egypt having lived between the Cinnamanian and the Turonian 99 to 93.5 million years ago. Now this formation is actually famous for how many great fossils that people have found in it over the years. Now this is potentially due to the regular periods of sea level rise, endangering a lot of the animals there and burying them in sediment quite quickly. The area itself was a coastal one, with abundant estuary systems leading out to sea. Whilst this area was prone to violent monsoons, Baharia wasn't actually that seasonal, staying as a tropical climate for most of the year. It was hot like it is today, but the climate was a lot more humid. Inland, around the various river systems, were vast mangrove swamps. This meant that these wetlands were full of brackish water, which is somewhere between seawater and freshwater in terms of salt content. They were also full of highly diverse plant life that would have evolved to deal with less oxygenated waters and varying water levels. Modern mangrove ecosystems for comparison would be places like swamps in Florida or the Caribbean, or a lot of places in Southeast Asia. And this kind of biome offers brilliant protection for warm and cold-blooded animals, both terrestrial and aquatic since it offers brilliant protection from things like coastal erosion and other threats, making for really good nurseries. Swimming in these waters were various mollusks and crustaceans, as well as a diverse number of cartilaginous and bony fish, and even some small sea turtles. Also present were plesiosaurs that ventured into the river systems, along with various crocodilians. Baharia even has the earliest known sea snake, Whereas on the land, we see a complete domination of reptiles. Who'd have guessed? Baharia is actually quite special here, since the diversity of large theropods is astounding, and the diversity of herbivorous dinosaurs is surprisingly low, especially compared to other Mesozoic formations. No ornithopods are actually known from this formation, with sauropods being the only large herbivorous dinosaurs of the area such as Egyptosaurus and Paralititan. Theropods, on the other hand, seem to be everywhere. You had Elaphrosaurus, Bahariosaurus, an undetermined Abelosaurid, the huge Carcharodontosaurus, and of course, Spinosaurus. In fact, these last two meeting each other would have actually resulted in a similar sight to what is seen in Jurassic Park 3. So, how exactly did Spinosaurus live, given all the confusion? Well, given that we know that Spinosaurus was piscivorous, which means that it ate fish, the short legs and paddle-like tail must have served some sort of aquatic purpose. But, according to hydrodynamics, an Olympic swimmer could have actually outswum this thing. So what the hell is going on? 
Well, like I said earlier, I do have my own theories on this. Studies have shown that due to its musculature and drag, the water kind, it was likely unable to swim fast enough to actually catch anything and likely struggled to even fight its own buoyancy to get underwater. But maybe it didn't need to. Perhaps rather than being a pursuit predator, it was actually an ambush predator. Much like a heron, Spinosaurus could have spent its time waiting for a fish to be unlucky enough to come close before snapping it up. This way Spinosaurus would have only needed to relax on the surface, gently swimming from spot to spot. Now this could explain all of the contradicting features on this dinosaur, given that it just relaxed on the surface of the water, leisurely swimming from place to place every now and then, but powered swimming wasn't really needed. Plus that massive sail could have been seen by a potential mate, all whilst the animal was mostly underwater and also whilst gaining or shedding heat. But what theories do you have? Let me know down in the comments, please leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it and I'll catch you guys next time.